Hello everyone. Got a somewhat short little video for you all as a bit of a filler video before I post my Eins one. It'll be done at some point, it's just that there's a lot of information I need to condense and sift through on that one, so stay tuned for it. Now, I'm not going to delve too deep into Okita's attack potency or speed in this video. As in both my Achilles and Gilgamesh video, you can see where the more top tiers and fates scale, and how most of, if not all, servants possibly have immeasurable speed as they can move in Solomon's temple which is all stuff I've talked about in said videos. But just to prove she's not super weak and just pull stuff out of my ass and make assumptions about her power, she is still able to battle Maxwell's demon, or more specifically, his phantasm. Maxwell being an actual really interesting character who I plan to make a video on about in the future. But basically, Maxwell's demon is a thought experiment that would hypothetically violate the second law of thermodynamics, or break it. It was proposed by the physicist James Clerk Maxwell in 1867, and the phantasm of Maxwell is just that, a being that can produce infinite energy. Within an event in Fate Go, it is considered to be a omnipotent god, which omnipotent doesn't really mean much. It still likely makes this a higher dimensional being as it is said to be a literal god, which gods and demons in fate are higher dimensional. With some demons like the pillars being higher dimensional concepts and gods already being higher dimensional concepts. This relates to Okita as she's able to battle and even damage the core of said demon's reactor. She's not able to harm Maxwell himself in Koha Ace, but is able to harm his phantasm. I'll explain more about that in a Maxwell video as there's a lot to uncover. But this basically gives Okita at least 4D to 5D attack potency, if you look at that information at face value. It's definitely way higher considering she can go toe to toe with the top tiers in Fate like Nobunaga, which one of her versions is a combination of every Nobunaga across the boundless realms of possibility. And Okita should be at least relative to her alter self who has some crazy scaling of her own. Cutting it pretty short in terms of speed and AP, but I'd rather not repeat a bunch of stuff I've said in my Achilles and Gilgamesh videos. In terms of stats, she doesn't really have anything groundbreaking, and what I mean by stats is stats within the verse. She shares a similar agility stat to servants like Achilles as an example, meaning she's pretty damn fast in combat when compared to other servants. As you can see here, she's a bit of an oddity when it comes to her magic resistance and riding skills. She does possess a high ranked Eye of the Mind skill, which gives her a sixth sense in combat and she has gained it through natural talent. Eye of the Mind basically allowing someone to keep up with others in combat even when being blitzed and outpaced. Like how Emiya in Stay Night has Eye of the Mind, which he gained through hard work instead of natural talent. He possesses it one rank lower, and when he was getting speed blitzed by Ku, he was able to still fight him. And in general, it's kind of a cheat skill as it basically causes the body to move on its own, which is supported by Material Book 3, saying that it's a skill which predicts the enemy's movements. Having an ability to fight when being speed blitzed is certainly a nifty ability. Weak disposition is as it says, so I'll let you read that. She also has a skill called Shikuchi, or however you pronounce it, which allows her to erase the space between herself and her opponent. Sadly, it is one rank away from being dimension hopping, which is a big sad. And the last on this little sheet here is a simple phantasm which she can wear to amp her stats, so that's pretty simple. But she does have more abilities. She's able to sense when she's being watched and can also sense bloodlust. She has some form of healing when she enters her spirit form. She's able to completely turn off her emotions in battle and is stated to be an empty husk when she fights. She erases things like fear, anger, and exaltation which is basically extreme happiness. The main character of Redline, even comparing her to his grandma when she was on life support with how devoid of thought and emotions she was. 
The battle in which this happened was against someone who was able to copy her combat style and techniques. Izo, who was the guy I'm referring to, also being a cool servant who I could make a short video on. She has a phantasm which summons the entirety of the Shinsengumi. <laughs> I'm probably butchering that pretty hard. But it was an order which Okita was a part of in life. And last but not least, we have her phantasm. <laughs> The Sanzazuki is actually a really good and interesting phantasm. It's a phantasm which ignores durability and severs delusions while also defying the laws of physics. When she uses her phantasm, she does a spatial jump or spatial warping, which erases the space between her and her target. When she actually thrusts her sword, is when it gets really crazy. I already mentioned how it ignores durability, but it also becomes saturated as said in a Grand Order event, as well as her bio. The sword creates a paradox of sorts called an event saturation phenomenon and is said in her bio to be quite literally unblockable. So what is an event saturation phenomenon? And why does it make her phantasm unblockable? I'll put what I found for it on screen, but basically the phantasm becomes saturated and exceeds any sort of concepts or limiting horizons which attempt to stop it. Which is actually really damn crazy if this is what Fate was going for with this. Also, each thrust existing simultaneously. So, that's another thing. And that's part of what makes Okita so powerful. I've mentioned this briefly before in my Achilles video as a kind of throwaway comment, but you can argue that all servants have conceptual attacks based off the fact that servants can damage and even kill demon gods which are said to exist as concepts, or that they can directly attack your soul. Using this to get a little wacky, or even silly, you could argue Ogita could rush someone with her phantasm, not be able to be stopped, then attack your concept. So take that information and do what you want with it. Thank you all for watching this short little intermission video, and I hope you all have a nice day.